All right. Looks like everything's straight. All right, cool. Looks like everything's straight to go. Um, so, everybody, thanks for jumping in, Dark Void and Jay Biggs, before I even got ready. Yeah, <laughs> y'all was y'all was way on point before I was even in the studio getting everything set to go. So uh thank y'all for doing this. Ain't your show, this is mine. No, no. <laughs> uh what's up, y'all? Uh, and I'm doing pretty good. Early Friday, uh son's third birthday. So um I'm not trying to be on long. But I was going to do this last night and just was too tired to actually focus on doing it. So I was like, yeah, I'm just going to do it in the morning. I'll, I'll do it in the morning right before the afternoon. Get it. Uh, yeah, yeah, she definitely uh, decided she wants to be nosy because a little while ago she was just watching Mickey Mouse Clubhouse with her brother. He's still over there chilling out, drinking some water and snacking. <sighs> But she decided she's got to come over here. Why do you need to be up here? She's just, this, this child is climbing me. Like I'm a big tree. Look at that. You good now? <laughs> she had to climb and sit up here. She's, you wanted, you, this is what you wanted. You wanted to see yourself on camera. This, this disrupted my whole flow of thoughts so you could be up on the camera and stare at the screen. <laughs> you yeah, at work, so you needed something better to do than work. <laughs> um, I, I understand how that feels, though. Tr trust and believe. I understand exactly how that feels, uh, especially when I was doing, when I was being an assistant general manager at a hotel. I wanted to do everything but be there. <laughs> everything but be there. Especially since the job required me to be basically on call 24-7. And I honestly wasn't making any more money than I was not being an assistant general manager. But that, that's a whole different subject for a different time. But uh, what we're here for me to discuss is the lost potential of the Wii, and I just accidentally turned on Xbox. Let's turn that back off. Um, <clears throat> the lost potential of the Wii U. Since everybody's saying it's a dead console, I mean, yeah. technically it was a dead console yeah. the moment that you game developers stopped being able to put games on it. Uh, that's, <laughs> But that was... That would have been about roughly two years ago at this point. Um, but it's dead now because you can't just go and get online with Nintendo's network. There are workarounds. If people are willing to do them, there's actually a workaround that, it's, that you don't even require to hack your uh, console. And that's through uh, the Pretendo network. But that's a whole other, other thing. And it does work. I, I've tested. It does work. Um <clears throat> But generally speaking, a lot of people have crapped on this console during its lifetime, during its time on the market. And then suddenly after it's off the market and when everything starts getting shut down and all that stuff, then everybody's concerned with it. Oh, we're going to miss the Wii U. We missed the Wii U. Bring back the Wii U. Like y'all didn't either one of two things I've realized with this is that there were a lot more people. That actually, what's up, Geronimo? There were a lot more people that either had or wanted the Wii U. And they didn't because of social media and what other people thought. Or they got privy to it way afterwards. And some people probably did get privy to what the Wii U was way afterwards because of all of the misre misreporting that went through gaming media that went to mainstream media. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, we all saw the media reaction after the E3 press conference. Yeah, 
which is ridiculous because especially with Adam Sessler and, and the others that joined in with him and uh, say, oh, no, we don't know what it is. Like you heard them tell you it's a different console multiple times. You've seen it at least twice before then in person. But you don't know it's a different machine. And, and again, I, I always say this, but how how was this thing here supposed to make a Wii a high definition console? This thing here. How? Who how is this supposed to make a Wii a high definition console? Doesn't make any daggone sense. With my enjoyment of Wii U, I never really thought of it as a failure except when it was online at the time. It was called a yeah, yeah. That 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 was the that was before the uh, 2011 E3. 2011 E3 is where they actually told everybody what the name was, and they had all the third party reps showing up, praising it, talking about, oh, this is going to change the way we game, and everything's going to be so much better, so awesome, and all that stuff, and then. Right behind that, all the bull crap happened. But I'm not going to focus on that completely. That is something worth a note, but I've, I've already talked about it multiple times on different videos and stuff. I even the recent video that I just posted yesterday, I talked about this. But what I do want to talk about, and it is something I actually mentioned. <laughs> Before Project Cafe. Yeah, I, re I remember all that. Because actually during that time period, I was writing editorials. So I was keeping up to date with a lot of that stuff. I was writing about the different rumors and stuff like that. And that was before my knowledge was more extensive. Because I only really had a cursory knowledge of everything. So yeah, it was just, it was one of those things where it's like, hmm. But. Let's focus on what, what good could have actually come of it if companies would have, one, kept their word, and two, not botched different games and stuff like that, and three, if people would have been better informed. And I'm not talking about those in the gaming community that pay attention to all this stuff, because those we do know that those people were informed and chose to act ignorantly. We know that they were informed and cho chose to act ignorantly. I'm talking about the general consumer that didn't really know. And even then, before I got as deep into gaming and my knowledge got as extensive as it did, I was like, how does, like, I always question it. Like, it doesn't make any sense that this one thing that doesn't have a whole lot of computational power is somehow going to make a thing greater than it actually was i was like that doesn't make sense does logically that doesn't make any sense and that was before i even got deep into learning about tech and coding and stuff like that so i'm like that doesn't make sense to me i knew that back then that didn't make any sense but now i know how much more nonsensical that sounds but i'm also more of an enthusiast than the general layman most people don't realize how the little things that they have in their hand actually work. There's a lot of people who love iPhones, have no clue how iPhones work. They have no clue how the inner workings of that those things go on. They just know it does a thing when I do a thing to make it do another thing. That's all they know. That's all they need to know. That's all they care about. And that's the, the same thing when it comes down to the Wii U. A lot of people didn't know this does a thing. It does this thing that this thing couldn't actually do. They didn't know that. And it, I can't fault the general consumer for not knowing that. Because it would take actually taking the time and learning to know that. And not everybody's going to spend that time doing that. The general purpose consumer, the casual, so to speak, is not going to take the time to learn the inner workings. So I don't fault them for that. That's not their fault. That's not their issue. Their job is to see something and at a cursory glance, decide if they want it or not. And if they see something and think they already have it and they don't see a purpose in getting it because they already have it, I can't be mad at them. 
I can't be mad at them. And it didn't help that Nintendo's advertising wasn't all that great. And my kids are throwing toys around. <laughs> so that Nintendo's advertising wasn't all that great. And that there was a lot of misleading information floating about at the time. So it 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 got hurt in more ways than one. But as I mentioned in the discussion that I posted yesterday, technically I posted it Wednesday, but video went live on YouTube yesterday. And I said I was going to redo my the untapped potential of Wii U video and do the lost potential. I hate that I, I mirrored so I, the lost potential of the Wii U. should be like that right there. <laughs> but um, when I did that video, I talked about all the things I could think of in that moment about what it would have been capable of, what it could have done just from the few things I did know about it. Now that my knowledge is far more extensive, I can probably talk about more things. Geronimo, Geronimo said, one thing I rem remember they were looking into incorporating with the Wii U was being able to use two game pads, yeah, on one console locally. I guess they either never got it working how they wanted it or they didn't have the game. <laughs> they had ideas. I can tell you that they had the ideas to utilize it. it. It was more of a cost effectiveness thing. If the Wii U had done better commercially, we would have seen two game pads. We would have seen game pads in America and Europe on sale individually like they were in Japan. It just didn't take off well enough for them to be able to go for it and implement it. Because I, I think that they had plenty of ideas to do it. It just didn't work out the way that they wanted to. And it would have been far more costly to try to work in two game pads into a game when the console isn't doing as well as they had hoped. That's how I look at it. A month after I had a stroke coming out of the MRI tube right before that E3 show, I understood that it wasn't that. i sorry that that happened to you. But that is wild that you were able to be that cognizant of it and have people act like they didn't understand what it was as far as people that were in the know. That that is that is a hell of a thing to, to be able to say. Like that that is that is amazing to be able to say. Hold on one second, because I gotta stop a child from doing something that's gonna get them in a massive load of trouble with their mother. Be right back. <laughs> Okay, I, I'm back from uh, rescuing a child from trouble. If we had more game pads, and imagine what the ultimate force. <laughs> Trinell, hey, hi, welcome in. You you know I talked about I talk. I, that's one of the things I'm going to talk about. Look, I I, I really got to get into this because if I if I don't, Trinell's going to start spilling my ideas before I do. <laughs> Every. I remember, I think I watched that E3. I watched that E3. Ironically enough, I watched that E3 on my Xbox 360, if I remember correctly, because <laughs> my uh, computer had been acting up. And it was I didn't realize it was because um, I had gotten a virus on it at the time. But my computer was acting up, so I was watching that on my Xbox, <laughs> actually. <laughs> Uh. Oh. Man, it, uh, uh, we are very happy that you are still here, man. Goodness. That, that's a that's a lot of, lot to be physically dealing with. 
But um, yeah, I, I remember watching that E3 because that, that was also the same E3 that they were talking about smart glass and how it was being implemented for games like Madden. And I was like so hyped for all that stuff. I was like, dang, they're going to be bringing out all this stuff and we're going to have all these things that we can do with it. I also wonder what if proper uh, optimization, how high rewards with multiple game pads would have been like. Like, serious, imagine a Legend of Zelda game where you can play Link and Zelda at the same time. Bruh, look, we we on the same, we in the same uh of of, of same like-mindedness and heart, man. Um uh, <clears throat> hold on one second again. Uh yeah, Dark Void. I was actually going to say that. I was actually going to talk about that. So hold on, let me show this real quick. You know, one of my conspiracy games is that I always wanted on the Wii U was Skyrim. I think if Skyrim actually came to it, it would have been a game changer with that gamepad. You are one hundred percent correct on that. It would have been a game changer, and they can't say they couldn't have done it because it's on the Xbox three hundred and sixty with a quarter of the RAM available a quarter of the ram available to it so it would have been fine to put it on there and think about how the inventory would have been on the game pad or i wouldn't say the map I, i'd probably put the inventory on there because you do a lot of swapping of weapons and a lot of using items really quickly so it would have been amazing to stick that on there it would have been amazing to put that on there but they didn't. And as a precursor, you still would have been able to use the Wii remote and chuck for your left and right hands and would have still been a precursor to Skyrim VR. So <laughs> either way, they would have still had the build for it. And that tells me that Bethesda at the time could have done it. And again, if games only cost about a million dollars to port, from the Xbox 360 over to the Wii U. That's roughly about 20,000 game sales that you have to make to break even. It's actually a little bit less than that, but I'm saying 20,000 just to, to worry about licensing fees and potential taxes and stuff like that. So roughly around 20,000 units sold would have made you break even. There is no way you tell me that Skyrim on the Wii U does not do at least 2 million. At least 2 million in sales. No way you tell me that that game does not at least do 2 million. It would have, it would have been so, e it would have been so easy for them to make that money. Especially if it was properly optimized and the game actually had all of the content available to it. And again, that's not talking about adding in DLC and stuff like they did anyway on the other platforms, which would have also extended how much money they would have made. But it would have been a really good version of the game. So we won't hide that one. Uh, man, y'all getting ahead of me, man. Y'all getting way ahead of me. Look. GTA 5. I actually did a video about how GTA 5 could have worked on the Wii U. I, I think I disguised it as the wrong game, though. <laughs> I, made, I made a joke about Project Cars using the title, and I don't think very many people paid attention to it. Because if you watch the video, the intro shows the Project Cars thing on there, and it gets broken to reveal GTA 5, but people didn't, didn't think about that. <laughs> Shh. <sighs> 
And I don't think Rockstar would have done a bad job on that either on purpose. It it would it would have not done they would not have done a bad job on that on purpose because they they want GTA to look as good as it could. Oh yeah, G, G, Project Cars. It was never meant for the Wii U, but the Wii U was in all of the advertising. The Wii U was literally in all of the advertising. And the main reason that they couldn't get Project Cars to work well on the Wii U is because of a few different types of tires that they had in the game that were bound to CPU usage, which they could have swapped those models for similar models that would have been hooked more toward the GP, the GP, GPU in the Wii U, and it would have probably worked perfectly fine. But they got so many people hyped up on the idea of getting this simulation racer on the Wii U just to turn around and say, oh, no, it was never intended for the Wii U, even though it was on all of the advertising. Every bit of advertising you have, but it was it was never intended for the Wii U. Yeah, slightly mad studios. You're right. <laughs> it was never intended for the console that you advertised it for along with the Xbox 360 and PS3 originally and then the PS4 and Xbox One after those came out. It was never intended for the Wii U though. Just saying. But <laughs> let me actually get into what I, I really wanted to talk about. Um, so all of the stuff that did come out on the Wii U was, for the most part, okay. I can't say all of the games were the best because they weren't. Some were, some were not. And they oftentimes were not optimized the way that they should have been. Um, and usually because dev teams didn't have the time to do it and they didn't fully utilize the different components of the Wii U. Like a lot, again, Shadow Fox says this pretty often, a lot of games on other platforms had their sound processed through the CPU, but the Wii U has its own sound card that could do that processing and take the stress off of the CPU. Same thing in the Nintendo Switch. It has its own sound driver that can take that stress off of the CPU, and a lot of companies will not use it for some reason. They won't even go in and do it. They won't go in and take that 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 stress off of the CPU by channeling the sound where it would make sense for the sound to go. And then when you get horrible results, you blame the hardware instead of the technique used to utilize the hardware. That's like me having a hammer and using the backside of the hammer to try to get a nail in and then blaming the hammer for the nail not going in. You're using it wrong, so you can't get mad at the thing you're using. So it makes no sense. And there, there were a lot of games that could have been ported to the Wii U and made single screen games. But so many companies said, well, we have to use the gamepad and we don't know how. Okay, you don't actually have to use the gamepad. These things, where, where is my pro controller? <laughs> These things have been in existence along with the console. You mean to tell me you couldn't find a way to use this by itself? This was not required. As shown by Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, this wasn't required to be used. It was there, and you could use it to enhance your game many different ways, but it wasn't required. So that was a horrible excuse. That was a horrible, horrible excuse, especially when Nintendo said, okay, well, you don't know how to use it. Let's show you that you don't have to use it. You can turn off that screen completely in your game and not have to use it and port whatever you want. Even if they didn't go ahead and make a bunch of new games for the Wii U, they could have ported so many games to that console. So many games could have easily just been ported over from 360 and the companies would have made bank after they sold 20 million units. With all the highly popular games, you can't tell me that you could sell 20 million units on a Wii U? Like, you you must be lying. You must be lying. <laughs> hey. 
Yeah, if GTA Five, if a GTA Five bundle did come out on the Wii U, there would have definitely been a spike in sales. There, there definitely would have been. But uh, Rockstar was in petty mode at that time. Hell, even if they didn't do that, if they would have remade Bully for the Wii U, made an updated version of Bully for the Wii U, and released it, they could have made that money. They chose not to. So. It, it was a lot of stuff that got lost. Think of like what Dead Rising would have been like. What are y'all arguing over now? What y'all arguing over? <laughs> but think of what like Dead Rising would have been like on the Wii U. If you'd have been able to use the gamepad like you do in uh not Project Zero, even though that's its name. <laughs> Fatal Frame. If you could use the camera like in Fatal Frame to take the, the pictures and the snapshots, that would have been that would have been more than enough for a lot of people for Dead Rising. That would have that would have been enough for a lot of people to just like, yo, I'm gonna buy Dead Rising all over again because it's on the Wii U. Why are you gonna do that? Because man, look, I could take that gay pad and hold it up like a camera and take them snapshots by hand. And a lot of people are better when they can actually do the physical motion themselves. So it, it's it's one of those things where it's like, yo, y'all was just looking for excuses to not do stuff. All think of all of the fighting games that skipped the Wii U for no apparent reason. None. No actual reason. All if y'all was going to use the gamepad for anything, just have it had display the move list for the character you're playing with. Sim that's that's a simple enough thing. It doesn't inhibit the game in any way, shape, or form, and it's the use of the gamepad, and on top of that. It allows you to be it allows you to put that on a system that didn't have much in the way of fighting games for an audience that was thirsty for them. This is a simple enough change. And I was going to talk about Skyrim, but we already talked about that. F Zero, if Nintendo could have had the idea out by then, could have been just like a so, so was it Sonic and Sega All Stars Racing Transformed, where you could have five people playing? I would I would expect them to I wouldn't expect them to do six people right out the gate because I would expect F Zero to be earlier on if they were going to do it. But if you could have had five people playing that game locally, on top of getting on maybe even an online mode to race with people, that would have been killer for that. Especially if they go, they went ahead and redid a lot of the F Zero X and F Zero GX tracks. Just throw all of them F Zero X, F Zero GX, and AX. Throw all of those tracks together into one game. Shoot, man, I'd have been all over that. I would have been all over that. <laughs> if he was making the game pad, it get, they were definitely making the game pad way harder than it needed to be. They made it really, really way harder than it needed to be. It was a simple concept. You could either use it as a as an additional player off screen, or you could use it as asymmetrical gameplay. A different player altogether, a different style player. There could have been there could have been a Dungeon and Dragons tabletop RPG game made for the Wii U. What are y'all arguing over? Toy cops? Really? <laughs> they could they could have made a tabletop Dungeons and Dragons. Like the perfect system to put Dungeons and Dragons on for the layman who doesn't understand how to play it. The perfect system to put that concept on. The perfect system. Gamepad, player, is the dungeon master and people? Hey, what's up, good, what's up, shooter? But the gamepad player is the dungeon master, and whoever has either the Wii Remote and Nunchuck, Classic Controller, or Pro Controller, all of those people are the individual players. Where is this a difficult concept? Dungeon master lays out the different enemies, lays out the map that they want, lays out the scenario. They, you can use the gamepad to set up how many different scenarios the campaign is going to be, how often the players are able to ch check in to different uh, stations. Or what. You could do all of that from the gamepad. All of that would have been doable from the gamepad. 
And it's like, nope, we can't figure out how to use it. Or as Tr- Trinell had brought up, Four Swords Adventures. And I, I said this in the discussion, just briefly saying it. Same concept as Dungeons and Dragons. But at this point, you could either use the pro controllers or, or this little device right here. This little device right here, the 3DS. Make it connect to the game while you're playing it and have it operate like Four Swords Adventures on the GameCube. But then you have the gamepad player being able to be a dungeon master in that, being able to set up the enemies, set up the mazes and traps, set up the different items that they can find and explore and get the perfect console for a customizable Legend of Zelda game. And I remember doing a concept for that, doing a video concept for that. And it bugs me to this day that Nintendo didn't attempt it. That they didn't attempt it. But I also understand why they didn't attempt it. The machine didn't do well enough. So putting the effort into those types of concepts wasn't worth it for them. Hell, another thing that could have worked that would have been great for the Wii U, and I've said it multiple times, a player that allows you to either one hook up your 3DS directly to the machine through those USB ports or a little box that's similar to how the PlayStation uh, PlayStation TV, which is basically just a Vita, worked. A little box that connected to your, your Wii U that you could put your game cards in or that would operate the 3DS's uh, OS but stream it through the Wii U. Because with the Wii U and the TV, you already have both screens. And just a couple sentence flips to change it so that the screens both show up on the gamepad or your television at the same time. There were there was a lot of things that could have been done. I understand why certain things didn't. Again, cost effectiveness and how much it would have cost to do them wouldn't have been that great. But so many things. Uh, another thing that could have been done if they would have combined the Wii U balance board, that's the Wii U balance board, the Wii balance board along with this and like maybe a little strap you could put on your arm or something like that where you could also hold the nunchuck in your hand and a Wii remote in your hand. They could have made a night's adventure game where you're using your legs with the balance board to move around and actually using your arms to perform combat. That would that would that's as, that would be as close to doing VR as possible without being actual VR. And that'd have been something amazing. That would have been amazing. It would have been cool to be able to do that type of thing. And again, these are things I think of off the top of my head. So if I can think of this, there is no way in the world you can tell me that game developers who are actually in the field can't think of this. Or that somebody hasn't thought of this and it just never got greenlit because the companies weren't willing to pay for it. That's how I look at it. It just never ended up greenlit because companies weren't willing to pay for it. Or, hey, take this, the Wii U Zapper, with the Wii Zapper, or make the Wii U zapper that they, they said that they were making, but they never actually produced. Place this here. Use it as a reticle on the screen. Have you in your first-person shooter game aiming just like that. Simple. Simple things that could have been done. Whereas this could have been used for on-rail shooters. It could have been used for first-person shooters. It could have been used for a lot of stuff in that, that vein. Never got the opportunity to do so. It just never got the opportunity to grow that way. And that just, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. But a more optimized version of Hyrule Warriors, like Trinell also talked about. I think that would have been possible if the Wii U actually had more RAM. I think, honestly, the biggest problem was that with the RAM not being high enough, it it did bottleneck it a bit. That's probably why textures got muddy and stuff when you did two players in Hyrule Warriors. 
But if it did say it had like four gigs instead of two, a lot of that stuff would have been cleared up because it wouldn't have bottlenecked so hard. Because then you wouldn't be doing a potential 720 or 1080 video stream on your on your television and then 480p on the gamepad and it and it crapping crapping out. It would have just been the the imagery the way it was supposed to look. Which Nintendo could have put that in there, but I, I'm pretty sure they didn't for cost effectiveness. They didn't want it to be more expensive than it was. So and it, it's one of those things where that could have been a better thing if they had just slid a couple pieces or a couple gigabytes more RAM in there. But at the time when the Wii U released, it was the machine with the most available RAM for games. So uh, at the same time, I can't I can't say, oh well, it's Nintendo's fault. They they released the most powerful piece of hardware for a home console at the time. And it's, it got it got ignored. And then we ran into this argument all all of eighth generation. Oh well, it needs more power. We need more power. We need more and more and more. And your games are getting worse and worse and worse. Releasing in the most broken states I have ever seen video games released in. Which is ridiculous. That is ridiculous. But if we would have ever gotten to the point of two gamepads being playable, usable at the same time on the Wii U, we would have actually been able to do 10 players local. <laughs> so I'll, the shooter I've always had I always wonder if the Wii U oh no nope. see your, your, yours popped up at the same time as Dark Voids I was trying to get this one I've always had the notion that game developers always ask for more but they never use what they already have same thing Iwata was saying back for the GameCube same thing they always want more but they never fully utilize what they have they never actually truly max out the potential of what they had I always wonder if the Wii U finished a traditional life cycle, if it would have ever got a revision in a thinner game, pad, particular thinner gamepad. They couldn't have done a thinner gamepad that way at the time. And it did its traditional life cycle. Nintendo's life cycle is four to six years in general. The Wii U was four and a half years as their market console. So it, it still fit the traditional life cycle. It might have ended a little bit sooner than they would have planned. I think they probably would have had another year, but I doubt that they would have revised the physical hardware like that because that potentially creates an issue with... And people will say, well, they did with the 3DS, but 3DS was a handheld. It was specifically a handheld. But doing that with a home console potentially causes issue with everything working the same. Unless, unless they kept all the parts the same internally. But I don't know if they could do that and have everything still work and function the same way. I think for the technology at the time, the Wii U gamepad was as small as they could get it. If people are okay with the Steam Deck, then there was no problem with the Wii U gamepad in my book. You are hitting on the truth there, Jay, Jay Biggs. If if the Steam Deck, which is bulkier and far less ergonomic than this little controller here, then you can hold the Steam Deck. This is no problem. So that excuse goes out the window. That excuse goes way out the window. Honestly, I think, again, this was due to people listening to what was said by others. They were listening to what gaming media was saying, especially small hands Adam Sessler, who literally almost couldn't hold any controller properly. If you've ever watched him in gameplay sessions with anything, he never holds a controller properly. So I would, I would not take his word for anything. 
But I can't, again, can't fault mainstream media for following in what he said because they're listening to who they believe is an expert with the best of intentions, at least as far as I know. Now, maybe their intention was the same thing. Maybe they were aligned with the gaming media that decided that they wanted to push a bunch of bull crap at people. I don't know. I'm not going to say that they were just simply because people that tend to not understand the subject don't usually go into the subject with the idea that they're going to destroy it. <laughs> so just, just saying if they don't have an understanding, I can't fault them for not having an understanding and taking one of the louder and bigger known personalities in the gaming space at the time and taking their word for it and then spreading their word out. Again, I, I can't fault them for that. And I can't fault the layman or the casual for not considering that this person has smaller hands than most people in general and also complains just about everything he does. So I can't I can't fault them for that. Because they don't necessarily know. But <clears throat> Let's see, so many things it could have done. I was getting on to the potential chance of having 10 players simultaneously on one console locally. If there would have been the option to have two game pads, you would have had two separate people playing on a game pad. Could have had four people playing with any combination of Wii Remote, classic controller and pro controller and four 3ds units all operating off of the same console think of how big that would have been if someone could have pulled off having 10 players local on one game console that would have been an achievement even if it only happened with one game, that would have been achievement. This is, oh, yeah. There's the answer. Yeah, they ended it earlier. Just think based off of today's tech for sure. Had a blast with game chat. <laughs> like you, Andre, I want to see this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I definitely want to see it come back with the next platform, but an expansion of what it did, not just two screens. Because obviously, they've already done that trick. They've done that trick several times. Let, let's see them build on that trick and make it a better trick. That, that's what I want to see. But who knows? Just depends on what Nintendo's got planned. And I can't say I know for sure. I can just go by the hunches I have based on some of the things I've seen that they have done and some of the patterns that they have fallen into that a lot of people don't tend to recognize. But in thinking about it, what game what game franchise would Nintendo have pushed the idea of having 10 players all at once? One that, that they could have run with, I think. Ugh. 10 players. Now, they could have done it for Smash. <laughs> but Smash is too easy. Dark Void, you mm, you beat me to <laughs> Mario Party. I think Mario Party or um, a re-envisioned Wii Party, because they already have Wii Party U, but that was only four players. But if they had a re-envisioned Wii Party and let you use your 3DS, 3DS's controllers, Brain age, brain age. Gosh, man, you you would learn how stupid your friends are very quickly. <laughs> you you would learn how stupid your friends are very very quickly. Oh man, Ninten yeah, Nintendo Land would have been a good uh, another one that would have been a good opportunity if they would have showcased how the 3ds could be used with the Wii U or a second one like a Nintendo Land Two that shows off that that would have been amazing. Just thinking of uh, the uh, the Mario Chase game, but at this point now you got 
two people running and you got eight other people trying to hunt them down, man, that'd have been chaotic. That would <laughs> that would have been chaotic. But another thing, uh, like Pac-Man versus, if they would have redone Pac-Man versus and you had Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man, and then you had eight people being ghosts, bruh, think about that, how uh, how hectic that would have been. Or um, there was a game that they released, and I can't think of it. There was one that was released, and now I'm like drawing a blank. Crap. <laughs> and I was just thinking of it too. And it's just like, oh, Kid, Ic Kid, Ic Kid Icarus Uprising HD with uh, 10 players playing simultaneously. You you might be on to something with that. Having four people on the console with the controllers and then two people on the game pads and then four more people on 3DSs. Oh, man. Nah, <laughs> nah, that, <laughs> that would be murder, man. That would have been murder. Think of and thinking about that. But then there's a there's another thing that nobody really talks about, and there's something that only I think only one game ever did it on the Wii U, and that was Tank Tank Tank, where you could I think they used a picture, but you could have had a game playing. With the Wii U gamepad, you being on the screen, like your picture on the screen, you talking back and forth with somebody while y'all playing. No games utilize that. And that would have been an amazing feature to use. You, like you, not saying it has to be on, but if you just had the option, if you wanted to be playing on your Wii U and be chatting with other people, and have your stuff on the screen. Like, have yourself on the screen and y'all playing online with each other. That would have been amazing for Star Fox Zero if it would have implemented a multiplayer mode. That would have been amazing for Star Fox Zero with a multiplayer mode. Or if Madden had still been consistently on the platform and they got to two game pads and you and your homeboy playing against each other, but your plays are not displayed on the screen. That that has a whole level of strategy to it because you can't you can't see the plays that are there and then think of how to act on the fly against those plays. You actually just have to try to take in all of the information as it's happening. That would have been that would have been a stroke of genius, and that would have kept me playing Madden. Cause I got bored with the how how the formula of Madden worked, so I'm just like, man. So, question of us often wondered: Do you think that Mario and Rabbit started out as a Wii U game? It more than likely did. It more than likely did, and since they knew it was not going to go anywhere, they switched production over. I don't because it. I mean, chances are it could it could have been either one. They could have started production for it right after the switch came out, or production could have been started for it during the Wii U. But since they knew Nintendo was going to be moving to another platform, Nintendo was in communication with them. They probably told them to move it over because they did that with several third party developers. They told them to move their games over to the Switch because they knew what they were doing. They knew they were going to be doing that. So it wouldn't be surprising. Oh, drawn to life. That would have been cool. Actually, now I think about Okami would have been good for the Wii U too. I, it didn't come out on the Wii U. That would have been for the gamepad. Come on now. That would have that would have made so much sense. That would have made too much sense. Honestly. But they didn't do it. Ugh. All these games. All these games that could have been amazing on there. Hell, um, there was one I was thinking of, and I'm not looking. I don't see it. Uh, 
Ah, screw it. <laughs> I can't I can't think of it. Beautiful, yeah, beautiful Joe on the Wii U would have been amazing too. Beautiful Joe on the Wii U would have been one of them, one of the ones they would have because they would have had to have done the collection. There was, there's no two ways about that. They would have had to do the full collection of all of those games on the Wii U. And I, and I think that would have been a pretty successful game on there. Or if they would have done the Double May Cry games and put your inventory on that gamepad. Just put that on there. Would have been right. It would have been just right. Dragon's Crown. You, you you might be on to something there. You you might be on to something there. That would have been that would have been good good. Or Yu-Gi-Oh. I've said this several times. Yu-Gi-Oh with two game pads, or if not two game pads, two 3DSs, or multiple 3DSs. Have a Yu-Gi-Oh game where your 3DS acts as your your game board and controller. I. There's no reason that that couldn't have been couldn't have been been done and have four way crossover matches duels like that, man. That would have been that would have been amazing. Again, there's so much potential this machine had if it would have only been able to be explored, but because it didn't do well, it didn't get that chance. Oh, and another thing, and I, I've said it before, wrestling games all of the WWE games and you add in Amiibo using this little piece right here, the, the, the NFC spot for Amiibo for the wrestlers, they could have sold wrestler Amiibo. You think that a John Cena Amiibo wouldn't have sold well, an Undertaker Amiibo wouldn't have sold well, a Stone Cold Amiibo wouldn't have sold well, a Rock Amiibo wouldn't have sold well? Come on, Sheamus? Brock Lesnar, Batista, you mean to tell me you don't think that any of those would have sold well if they would have put WWE on the Wii U? Come on. Because you could have easily sold Amiibo with that and had the Amiibo act as AI partners just like it did for, for Smash Brothers. That That's all they would have needed to do. All they would have needed to do. That that's simply it. That's all they would need to do. <laughs> okay, I have maybe one or two, maybe one, maybe two. Because you imagine if the Wii U is successful in our proper Eternal Darkness remake, <sighs> bro, that hurt my soul. That hurt my soul so bad. <laughs> that hurt my soul so bad. Oh man. Ugh. Geist would have been amazing with that gamepad. A Geist remake with the gamepad would have been amazing. One second, I'll be right back. Oh, Ace Attorney? Shoo. And you get to be all the different lawyers? <laughs> or even or Professor Layton? Come on, a Professor Layton game on the Wii U where you had to try to figure out the puzzles uh, before everybody else playing and you had to either use your 3DS or your gamepad screen to do it? Right, that, that would have been fun. 
that would that I would say that'd be six players. You'd have the game pads, the two game pads, and then four 3DSs all linked to the same console. Cause you don't want anybody playing on the screen. You want them all playing on the individual screens, trying to solve the puzzles before each other. And then it shows you on the screen ranking who, who did it the fastest. A Professor Layton party game would have been a cool concept. Or Atlas to Cal- <laughs> Come on now. I didn't even read that. I didn't even read all that. At Trauma said, I actually made a video about that. That it should have been on there. Um, Metal Slug, like Four Swords, where you could go to secret areas alone. That would have been cool too. That would have been cool. Everybody had been able to be separated, playing on their own screens. <laughs> that would have, man, that would have been cool is <laughs> uh say wait i have smaller fingers than sessler and mind you i played with that game <laughs> when my wrists were hurting you two hours oh so you just removed you just removed the excuse for adam sessler thank you <laughs> thank you trip Lil. you just removed you just removed the the, the excuse for adam sessler <laughs> he, he's like oh hell no nah. i ain't letting him get away with that excuse nah uh-uh we <laughs> oh true he he just put a hole he put a whole hole in that argument for me for adam look i was trying to get a man the benefit of the doubt <laughs> As much as I dislike Adam Sessler, I was at least trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. You just said, nah, fuck that. Mm -mm. I mean, I ain't letting him get away with that because I love playing with that gay pad. Hell nah. And my hands are smaller than his. Nope. mm -mm, We ain't doing that. (laughs) Uh, Arkham Asylum and Arkham City non arm mm, non armored edition. So just regular Arkham City. (laughs) because <laughs> that, that's all that is regular armor regular arkham city i'm sorry the gamepad was the best usage of that that was one of the best usages of the gamepad by a third party i have seen on the wii u besides affordable space adventures that was one of the best usages of the gamepad and it, it made me so mad to know that uh freaking watchdogs was delayed because they were improving the gamepad and it was nowhere near the quality of what Arkham City did. So it was super pointless. <laughs> oh, man. That's funny as hell to me, though. But I'm sitting here, like, thinking of all the stuff that would have been really good. <laughs> man, Andre, when you went on that Cecil <laughs> Shell cast, you made me feel like I. <laughs> Bro, I don't even fully remember how badly I went in on him, but I just know for a fact that dude ticked me off. It ticked me off, especially when you've been around the gaming industry for as long as he has, and he most definitely didn't actually want to be in the gaming industry. But he thought himself better than everyone else. Of course, I'm going to be ticked off by that. Is still ticked off. We didn't still okay. Yeah, yeah Trin- Trinell, I I fully, fully, one hundred percent with you here. Still mad we didn't see the full potential of the Wii U, the Breath of the Wild for on Wii U, and I understand why we didn't because if you did, then that would be a notch that the Wii U has over the Switch, and Nintendo didn't want the Switch to look bad in comparison to its predecessor. But my thought would be that the Wii U has specific usage for the gamepad that are separate from the Switch, and the Switch's gimmick would have been portability, sort of how, like, Twilight Princess had the original perspective on GameCube, but it was swapped for the Wii, and you still had you had the motion controls with the Wii remote and nunchuck. Something they could have done, but I understand why they didn't do it. I understand why they kept the, uh, the feeling exactly the same. Oh yeah, that that's that's why I referenced it, uh, tri- Triple M. That's why I referenced it. 
because I know Star Fox did that for for a local play where you can see everybody on the camera, but it wasn't online. It was just local, which I don't mind. That would have been great if it was online and you could do that. Local, it doesn't really make much of a difference because you can see the people unless y'all are in separate rooms, then it's a whole different thing. But it would have been great for the Wii U if Star Fox Zero implemented online multiplayer. But I know Tank 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 did something similar where it snapped a picture and you could use the picture and you could see the picture when you were playing online with other people. That would have been that would have been cool if more games did that. It, it's just like there was so much stuff that could have been done with the Wii U that never really got done. Like I said, with the whole WWE thing, having the Amiibo wrestlers would have been fucking on point. I I, I know people would have bought those out. Those things would have been constantly sold out during that time frame, just like Amiibos were anyway. And think, those would have probably cost more than the regular Amiibo because they'd have to be specialized. And you know WWE going to get their cut. You know they're going to get their cut. But people would have bought those. People would have bought those for 30 and 40 bucks a pop, just those alone. I know people would have bought those for for a a decent penny. And Nintendo would have got their money as well as WWE. They would have made their money off of that. Just like uh, another one. Um, I have it. I know I have it. I have it here. This. I have one of them at least. Disney Infinity. This is 2.0. It's going to be blurry because the screen's not trying to show it as a game. Because it's not a person, um, because of the settings I have on the camera. But if Disney never shut down that team and they made a deal with Nintendo, you could have had a crossover game for Disney and Nintendo that could have been very similar to Kingdom Hearts that would have used that could have used the Disney Infinity Toys to Life stuff as well as Amiibo. But they didn't think that far. They shut down that team and didn't think about it. And this is the same team, mind you, that created Epic, Epic Mickey, if I remember correctly. So I'm like, y'all, why'd y'all do that to them? Why y'all do them like that? So I, I really wish that team would have still been around and that Nintendo and Disney would have cut some sort of deal to make that game. Because that would have been... That would have been a high seller. That would have been a system seller because of the fact that it would have been so so unique. Or, um... Damn it, Trinell, why are you reading my mind, man? Because I was just about to get to that. I, I was just about to get to that. <laughs> I was just about to talk about how stuff like Power Stone could have worked really well for this. Especially if you take it, if you take it a step further, where people can use their 3ds's and they can get separated from each other, like sort of like what Power Stone Two did, where it had the little mini games in between the battles, but have it so that everybody has their own individual mini game. So you could have, a, if, if again we're going with the idea of the Wii U having two game pads, you could have had four, six separate layouts for that. Man, that would have been that would have been bomb. Um, <clears throat> but also for the Wii U stuff like uh Dead by Daylight. Dead by Daylight would have been awesome on the Wii U if it would have been a, if it would have come out during the time the Wii U was Nintendo's main console. Just think about how that would have worked. When you have one person on the gamepad, they are the monster. And then you have the four individual players on the screen. Why not? It would that that's the that's the home console that would work the best for. Yeah, obviously it wouldn't look as good because you'd have to have the resolutions for everything scaled down. But think of how fun that would be. Like you y'all swapping off, taking turns, being a monster man. Shoot. I'd have been straightforward. Or a game like The Medium, which came out also after the Wii U. And I, I made, made a discussion on this. Where you have two parallel versions of the world around you, 
one version of the world is just everything normal and the other version of the world is the spiritual realm where you see how everything actually looks that would have been cool i mean it, it's not like they weren't forcing a whole lot of high processing on all of these cons on the, the xbox xbox series and pc when they did this because it runs two different rendered versions of the same world like you essentially be doing the same thing on the wii u it just have to be de- scaled down resolution wise but it could be done <laughs> yeah did dead by daylight would be the evolution of the luigi's mansion nintendo game yep you you were spot on with that triple m you are spot on with that take because that's that's exactly what it would be honestly i think that's probably where people got the idea from if we're honest about it that's very very likely where they got the idea from so i don't know but that that would have worked <sighs> but oh, one sec.
sorry for uh, <laughs> bouncing off when my wife called to see her son. So I was making sure she could see her son for a moment. Um, yeah, um, we get to that. Remind me of the Pac-Man. I actually talked about that. <laughs> Pac-Man versus. <sighs> so much stuff that got so uh so much stuff that got thrown under the bus for the Wii U that would have been awesome to be on there. And I just think what Crisis 3 would have been like had it actually released when uh <laughs> yeah, a father's got to do what a father's got to do. Um, but yeah, Crisis 3 would have been awesome had it actually came out on the Wii U, but at least it made it to the Switch after nearly a decade. <laughs> yeah, that, that was the meme for the longest time, but can it run Crisis? <laughs> Hold on one second. My son's got a box I'm going to have to get from him. Uh, I, yeah, all three crisis games would have been fantastic on the Wii U, just like all three Mass Effect games would have been fantastic on the Wii U if they would have all been put on there. EA dropped the ball majorly on that one several times. But I think like uh, Nice of Old Republic could have been put on there really cool. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, everybody wanted Crisis. Um, yeah, Nice of Old Republic could have been put on there. Heck, the Old Republic could have been put on there. Jade Empire. All those games operate in the same vein. Like, and the gamepad could have just been used for maps or inventory management. Or even going back and taking some of the old RPGs that never really got anywhere. Like the Dragon Quest games that could have been put on the Wii U that didn't end up on it. I was like, it's just... When you look at this machine and you see all the potential for all the stuff that would have been on there, RPGs in general, inventory management for that screen, inventory management for quick swapping of items for your characters, would have been amazing. Action games would have been good for inventory management or maps. Oh, no, I don't blame you. I don't blame you for uh, getting it for Xbox or for PC for that price for the whole trilogy. <laughs> like five bucks. I, I'm not going to be mad at you for getting it for that. It was just it's just ridiculously funny that there, there was the rumor that it was coming to the switch like right after I made that video saying that it should be on the switch and it just never made it there. Or it's just what was it? Uh Bioshock. Who wouldn't have wanted Bioshock on the Wii U? But they said they couldn't put it on the Wii U, but yet they went ahead and put it on iPads. I was like, y'all do know the processors. And the Wii U is better than those, right? On the CPU and the GPU side of it, it was better. Yeah, Geronimo, you're right. Mass Effect 3 being the only one on the Wii U and on top of that, it doesn't even have all the content. 
That's horrible. All right, and we got somebody trying to offer me a promotion for <laughs> viewers and views and just going to say this right now. I'm not paying for anything to boost views or get viewers. Not going to happen. If I can't organically get them, then I don't deserve them. Simple as that. Um, but Mass Effect 3, if if they didn't want to put the first two games on the Switch, not the Switch, on the Wii U, the best thing that they could have done is allow you to transfer your save from the previous consoles over to the Wii U, that would have made up for it because then you could have taken all your data along with it and you just get the game on another platform. Like, that would have been the fix if you weren't going to put all of them on the console, knowing that you were going to release the trilogy on both the PS3 three, and 360 and also on the PC all at the same time together. <laughs> this is like, man, mm-mm. Man, that would that would just freaking ridiculous. And then it didn't help with Mass Effect 3 that it, it again it didn't get any of the DLC beyond that first DLC pack that was basically free along with the game. It didn't get any of the other DLC that came out after the system launch. Like y'all could have at least put the DLC packs on there, but you didn't. By the way, for the ones that complained about just using the gamepad for maps and menu, at least they can see the graphics for the game without layers of letters, obstacles, obscuring their view of fidelity. That's true. If more games did what Monster Hunter 3 did, Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate did on the Wii U, I put all that stuff down on the gamepad and you don't have to look at it if you don't want to. All you have to do is glance down at your screen real quick. Or if you're playing with the Pro Controller, have your gamepad set up on the stand next to you and take a quick glance. It takes two seconds to look. Not even the full two seconds. A half second, you can see all that information and get what you need from it. That's what I'm like. Mm. I agree with this. I 100% agree with this. It would that Witcher 2 would have been Witcher 2 would have been one of those games that will, would have worked on there, but they just kind of nope. <laughs> uh J Biggs, I can kind of understand that. I, I can I can understand that if, if that was your your thing at the time, I can fully understand that. You didn't feel like you had wanted to go to the store to go pack up pick pick out a call of duty and they only put it on they only made it physical for the wii u which was weird because it was digital on other platforms at the time that's why i was like it just didn't make any sense but eh, it was just like nope they uh they did retail only for that there's some games were retail only and then there were some games that were eShop only for the, the wii u and it was again odd choice like Fist of the North Star 2, uh, Ken's Rage. Fist of the North Star, Ken's Rage 2 was digital only on the US eShop. US side only got it digital. I think the same was it was the same for Europe. I'm not sure. Um, I know in Japan they had a physical release, but over here we only got digital. And it's the same thing that happened with Fatal Frame. We only got the digital release over here, though over there they had the physical. I'm like, why not just do both? Why not just give us both? Like it, but they didn't, and that that was one of the reasons a lot of people said they weren't going to get that game. Now it's on other platforms, and a bunch of people getting it. So it's like at this point, you just it just defeated the purpose. Like it's still the it still plays the best on the Wii U, though. I, I'm sorry, it plays the best on the Wii U. Other plat, it's it's passable on other platforms, but it still plays the best on the Wii U, just like Zombie U. Still plays the best on the Wii U. Yes, Triple M, you're right. That's before Call of Duty was bloated with file sizes. Yes, well before then. <laughs> so, 
Eh, they just didn't. Uh, yeah, I think I think Power Regions did get it physical. Uh, Fatal Frame, which is called Project Zero over there. It's Project Zero in Japan and, and Power Regions, but over here is Fatal Frame. Could you two chill? Like, I understand y'all having fun, but man, y'all louder than my thoughts. <laughs> oh, oh, man. <laughs> uh, it's, it's just like there's so much stuff that the Wii U ended up missing out on. Sports games and so many others. Like, what just happened? Hold on. Let me check on that. Hey, there we go. Parenting and podcasting. Unless I was running a parenting podcast, they don't exactly always mix. And y'all arguing again? <laughs> um, and the thought just hit me um, while I was handling the, be the bereavement of my children there. The thought had just hit me. And it's that nobody uh, really tried to go ahead and redo the concept of Star Fox Guard. That game gets wholeheartedly ignored on the Wii U. But could you think, uh, imagine just as, as odd as it might sound, but just a game where you're like a head security officer or like a dispatch for like a police agency and your job was to monitor a bunch of ongoing situations at the same time. Like you'd on your television screen, you'd see like a board of like 15, 16 different, 16 different screens. It'd have to be an even number for it to look right. So somewhere between eight and 16 different screens of things happening, or maybe even started off like where you start with four and then it works its way up to eight and then 12, then 16, and then ultimately ending at like 20 where you can see all these little different situations going on on different like cameras in like a building or a facility or somewhere that you're like taking watchers or guard over. And then on your gamepad, like your gamepad, you can see like the actual thing, like you select between the, the different screens and you'll see them on the gamepad and you can choose to either one dispatch someone to the scene to handle it or not just depending on how it looks or you could dispatch different types of people like maybe if you're just a general dispatch you could dispatch fire ambulance police why are you two arguing what now what's the fight over 
my kid, my kids like right when I'm I'm in a good middle of a good thought too. Um, but you could do like be like a rescue dispatch. That would be something amazing to do, and then you could see how things play out on the screens. Come, like that would have been amazing. And yeah, Dark Void, I actually did. I did that video. I did that video. How Five Nights at Freddy's. At the time, I think they were up to five and they said Freddy's four. But I did the video for how that series would have worked well with the Wii U gamepad. And it just, it never really took off anywhere. Yo, what's up, Grunt? How you doing, man? (laughs) You came in, and I wasn't even planning for this to be this long. I could, I, I was... I was not planning for this to be this long. I was actually thinking I was going to be done in like 40 minutes and it'd be back off. But everybody's thrown out so many things to talk about. I was like, gosh, this is going longer. Not that I'm complaining. I actually like that everybody's on on point with me for the same stuff. But yeah, Five Nights at Freddy's would work really well. Especially since you wouldn't like, especially for, uh, I want to say for Five Nights at Freddy's 2. Yeah, they, they they little they little uh I want to say little barbarians. <laughs> but Five Nights at Freddy's two would have worked really well because you wouldn't have had to do the look down and look up stuff. Was it two, or was that four, or three, where you had the different touchpad things that you could do? So any of them had different ways that the game could have been used if they were put on the Wii U. And again, that's another game that was really popular at the time just didn't get translated over that system. And then Minecraft was a missed opportunity because you already had a game on the Wii U that did what Minecraft should have done, and that was Cube Life, which did exactly what Minecraft should have done on the Wii U, but it didn't. And the 3DS version of Minecraft did what the Wii U version should have done. So I'm like, who thought this was a good idea to do it this way? And not the way that makes the most logical sense. Somebody. Somebody out there thought that that made more sense to do. Um, <clears throat> but there, there was just so much stuff that could have been on there would have been amazing. Street Fighter. Street Fighter 4. Ultra, Ultra Street Fighter 4. Did not grace the Wii U. U. Ultra. U. Easy sell. <laughs> <laughs> like man, y'all. Mm. Uh, yeah, Minecraft could have been a Nintendo game, but N- Nintendo didn't want the IP. I mean, that's their loss specifically, but they passed on it. They passed on it. I, I have no idea what was going on with Nintendo at the time, but hey, somebody still got it. Somebody still making money off of it. But if Nintendo had taken Minecraft, would it be what it is today? That we don't know. Could have been, but would it have been? Either one could have. Either way, could have. It could have gone. But it's yeah. Minecraft is on the Wii U, but Minecraft on the Wii U play is basically exactly like Minecraft is on the 360. It doesn't take it doesn't do the inventory stuff on the, the uh gamepad screen, which is weird that it doesn't because they did the 3DS version and it does, or the new 3DS version, because it doesn't play on the regular 3DS. So I'm like, you thought about it here, but not there. Like, why isn't it there? And that as far as I know, it doesn't operate as a fifth screen. Like where you could have four people on the other screens and the, and the gamepad is a fifth screen. I don't think it does. Maybe it does, and I forgot. But as far as I know, it doesn't. So it, it's like wholeheartedly, this version of the game didn't get the love and care it probably should have. And then there there were the Telltale games, the Telltale series games at the time, like The Walking Dead and The Wolf Among Us. Those should have been on the Wii U. You had a mobile version of this game, you had the PC version of this game, and you had the console versions of this game. The Wii U version would have been able to use all versions 
of control schemes that were for all of those other platforms combined onto one platform. Because the Wii Remote and Nunchuck could have simulated mouse and keyboard. Pro Controller obviously would be simulating a regular gamepad. As well as the Wii U gamepad being able to do that. And then the touchscreen on the gamepad could have operated like the game does on mobile. So I'm sitting here like, why did y'all not put this on the Wii U? <laughs> like, there was money to be had there, and y'all didn't do it. And it doesn't make any sense to not do it because of how the game works. So it's like, they just wholeheartedly said, no, nah, we ain't even, even going to worry about getting that, making that money. Again, remember, porting from the Xbox 360 to the Wii U only cost about a million dollars at the time. And all you would have had to do to make money, to make bank in a general scope is sell 20 million units. Not 20 million units. <laughs> 20,000 units. <laughs> and you would have make your money back. That would have been your break even for most games. Now, for the Telltale games, it probably have been more around like 40000 but I'm pretty sure they would have made that. Again, it's just me being observant of stuff. It's just like so many chances for things to be done weren't done. So many. And when you look at this this system and how everybody retrospectively, a lot of people try to say, oh, yeah, I love the Wii U. Like, no, you didn't. I was around. I was viewing your stuff back then. You did not like that console or you didn't tell people you liked it. You basically crapped on it every time you had the opportunity to. So I'm like, it's unfortunate it got treated the way it did. It, it's basically... Nintendo's second Dreamcast. If because if you think about it, the GameCube was also like the Dreamcast for Nintendo because it was only appreciated after people didn't really have it as the main platform anymore. So it's the same thing that the Wii U is going through. It didn't get appreciated until after it wasn't the main platform anymore. And that that that's the thing that sucks. It sucks because if I could sit here, I could sit here and prattle on for hours about stuff that would have been great for the Wii U to have. Or even if they would have actually taken the time to go ahead and put all like a lot of th- a lot more third parties would have taken the time to go ahead and release licensing so that Nintendo could put their third party games on the different platforms that were on virtual the virtual console for the Wii U. I'm like, why didn't y'all? They did for 3DS, which is weird because you see a lot of third party games on the virtual console for the 3DS, but not so many on the virtual console for the Wii U. And I always question that. I always question that because it doesn't make it it generally doesn't make any sense to me. Like, why would you avoid putting these games on there when it would make you a little bit of extra money? But they chose not to. And and I could I think for for some stuff I can kind of understand. Because they probably already had other versions of those games out at that time. But also the the versions of the those specific versions weren't out. Now, maybe a lot of it was licensing agreements and issues. I don't know for sure. I'm not going to pretend I do know. But it it just it sits odd where there was money to be made on this platform. And if only the publishers, I can't say the developers, but if only the publishers would have stuck behind it like they had promised that they were going to do when it was when it was supposed to launch, it would have been in a far better position. I'm not saying that the Wii U was going to do high numbers. 
I think if if it would have been supported the right way, it probably would have maxed out at 30 million units. It probably would have maxed out at 30 to 35 million units if it was properly supported by the companies the way it was supposed to. And its potential probably would have been fully explored or maybe not fully explored, but more explored than it got. Now we're going to, in, in the coming years, you will see home brewers actually explore the potential of this machine. Home brewers will be the lifeblood of the Wii U going forward. And they will do what they can to fully push each and every grain of salt that they can from this machine to explore what it is actually capable of. And I know that day is going to be it, like in the next over the next 10 years, we're going to see people take those types of concepts, the ones that I was talking about, and actually put them into practice with this machine. I'm looking forward to it. I just wish it would have been able to be done during its life cycle and not posthumously. But uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and close off here because we've talked about a lot of stuff, a lot of different games. <laughs> and again, I could definitely prattle on for several hours, but I do have things to do today and some stuff to get prepared for my son's birthday party tomorrow. So uh, I want to say thank you to everybody that joined in. Uh, it was a pleasure to be able to run through all of this stuff with you, even with the interruptions. <laughs> and yeah, um, I'm I'm doing more live streams, Grant, so you will likely catch me. I was actually supposed to do this last night at about 8 o'clock. But I was way too tired to do it. I couldn't have focused. So I'm going to be doing a lot more. Uh, be doing a lot more of these. So you y'all will see me live more often. Um, you will definitely see me live more often because I want. There's a lot of stuff that I can't do just videos on, and a lot of those things actually require viewer feedback, like while I'm going through it. So it, it makes it easy, it makes it more interesting. Plus, I want to get back to doing, like I said, I want to do the game idea foundry talk. I want to get back to doing that. I'll get back into doing the cross zone, and those are going to be premieres. I'm not going to do them live, obviously, but those will be premieres where you'll be having me in the chat with y'all. So I'm planning on doing that. It was Thursday nights, I'm going to be trying to take over at least a portion of y'all day, like somewhere between an hour and an hour and a half. A y'all day is going to be consumed by me on Thursdays. If y'all, <laughs> if y'all come around to see it. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to do that more often. But I also have other stuff I gotta prepare. Like I said, I gotta get ready for my son's birthday party tomorrow. It's gonna be a little small thing for family, but I still gotta get stuff together for it. And I'll be working on putting more stuff out and making more videos and more streams uh but otherwise thank you guys for joining keep your eyes and ears up for more stuff from me and until the next time people please enjoy your games and peace out everybody while i go uh deal with my vagabond children